Hello, my vintage enthusiast friends. Today, we're going to be talking about the GoTech floppy emulator and how to install flash floppy on it from start to finish. This GoTech is straight from Hong Kong, $17, $25. Look for the best deal. Shipping can take a while. So if you source it locally, it will probably be a little bit more expensive. The only requirements for putting flash floppy on this is a PC or a Mac. It can be a modern one. You don't have to go to Windows 98, Windows 7, Windows 10, Mac OS, uh, newer than Snow Leopard should work. The key thing is, besides the GoTech in a computer, is a USB to USB-A cable. Both ends are the same, so it plugs into your standard USB port on the computer and must be also able to fit the USB port on the GoTech. It's possible to make your own USB-A to USB-A cables using sliced up printer cables, uh, considering that the pre-made ones are only about two or three dollars. I suggest going that route. There's less that can go wrong unless you live in some part of the world where they're unobtainable or you're in a dire emergency and must have it flashed right now. It's worth the wait and the $2. It is a key point that we need to connect the programming links here and also provide power from the USB, which we get by connecting another link in this little area here. We can ignore the floppy ribbon cable and the power connector. Those are only going to be used when you finally connect it to whatever your device is, vintage PC, music sampler, synthesizer. Same thing with this jumper block. That's just a drive configuration that's going to depend on if it's being plugged into an Amiga, uh, Yamaha DX7, floppy drive version, whatever. So we can ignore those for now. Right now, we're only concerned with these empty holes. Some models will have only three holes across the bottom here. Uh, newer ones have the full four holes across the bottom row here. It doesn't matter. The layout is the same. Just ignore the additional hole here or lack of hole thereof. To connect the jumpers, use small bits of metal. Paper clips work. Bend them into the shape that you need. They don't have to be super long. It's possible to jam them in in the needed positions from the top here. It's kind of fiddly though. It's easier to use a screwdriver. Remove the top case, only three screws. Set it aside, then you can clearly see what you're working with. One jumper goes across the top row, the farthest two pins there. The next one goes from the hole beside that diagonally. like that. It may be hard to see on the video how I have those connected. Looking at a still picture will help. And that's it. As long as they're not touching each other, it's all fine. They don't have to be super long. They should be shorter. Then we go to the computer. Nothing else is connected to the GoTech. Plug in the USB. Connect to available USB port. The only software you need is the GoTech Flash Floppy Easy Installer Bundle. It works on modern Mac and modern PC. The link will be by the video or wherever you're watching this tutorial. It's just a zip file. It's 
extract it. You're on Windows, you want to go into Windows, of course. There's one command here, install flash floppy to GoTech. You'll see when you plug in the GoTech, it's going to attempt to install drivers. A lot of those are going to pop up. Windows 10 systems will typically install a driver and Windows 7 systems will not. It doesn't matter, either way is fine. When the new device dialog stop popping up in the bottom right hand corner, we're ready to run the utility. It's as simple as clicking, install flash floppy to GoTech, double click that to run it. There's this new window that opens up. It warns you not to connect anything except for the USB cable to the computer from the GoTech. Do not power the GoTech with the normal floppy power connector. Do not have the ribbon cable plugged in. No, the GoTech does not have to be in your synthesizer, Amiga, sampler, anything. It's just by itself connected with the USB cable to the computer. That's it. We're ready. We hit enter, proceed. It's going to make sure that we have administrator ability. So we say, yes, we want to allow it. It's going to install custom drivers. So that's why it doesn't matter if Windows 10 or Windows 7 finds drivers or not. So this does take a minute, just be patient. Some systems are faster than others. The first stage, it has to clear the stock GoTech firmware. That's why the dialog pops up on the bottom right, USB device is not recognized. That's normal. There's a countdown here. It takes a minute. It waits for the computer to recognize that a quote unquote new device is plugged in. It's new because we just unprotected it. This is the second stage where it's actually installing the flash floppy firmware to the GoTech. And that's it. Close out that window. You now have a custom GoTech with Flash Floppy installed. Once the flash process has ended on the computer, we unplug the GoTech. We just take out the USB. We remove the programming links. If you remove the case, it just goes right back on. Tighten your screw holes. And you have a flash GoTech. Before totally installing the GoTech in your device, you can install just the power lead. And if you turn it on, this should say F-F. That means flash floppy is installed. As long as a USB drive is not in the port, it will report F-F so long as the flashing procedure worked. If so, connect your floppy ribbon, your power connector, and set these jumpers properly. 
Usually you would remove this jumper here and just leave either the S0 or S1 jumper. Usually IBMs or compatibles are going to be S1. The majority of other devices will be S0. You can either look it up online to see what the proper setting is, guess at S0 and change it to S1 if that does not work. Here we are on Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks. The utility should work on newer versions as well. Older versions like Snow Leopard will not be successful, at least with the current Flash Floppy Easy Install Bundle. What we need to do is download the Install Bundle, extract it to the desktop, enter the folder. There will be a Mac-specific folder. Enter there. There are two key commands here. One is to install the drivers. You can double click that, click through the prompts. It will ask you for your admin password. It installs very quickly. Now we need to connect our GoTech just with the USB cable from the GoTech to the Mac. We need the programming and power links set on the GoTech. The floppy power connector should not be connected to the GoTech. The data ribbon cable should not be connected to the GoTech. Not much will happen when you connect the GoTech. There won't be any driver notifications or unknown hardware alerts, unlike Windows. Once the GoTech is connected through USB, we have the install flash floppy command here. It's from an unidentified developer, so by default, Mac will not want you to open this. So we can control click, pick open, and it will ask you to confirm to open it if you've never run it before. I have, so it didn't give me the alert. This is a warning reminder, do not connect anything but the USB cable to the GoTech. We've already covered that. When you're ready to begin, hit enter. It will ask you again for your admin password. Hit enter. It has done the first flashing stage, which is blanking the GoTech to unprotect it. Now there's a wait here for the GoTech to come back online. And now stage two, which is the actual flash floppy installation is complete. You can hit enter to close the window. Unplug the USB cable from the computer. And disconnect the programming and link jumpers. The biggest problem is that the programming and power links here are not making good electrical connection. Sometimes you'll plug in the GoTech to the computer. This will be a red light. It's not supposed to be. Usually through the programming stage when we're installing Flash Floppy, this is just gonna remain blank. If it doesn't seem like the computer is even attempting to install drivers, if it seems like it does not see the GoTech at all, these links are probably the problem. They have to maintain good electrical contact. Since we're not soldering in most cases, one thing you can do is tape these down or even hold them in place with your finger while you connect it to the computer. Keep holding them through the entire process until Flash Floppy is actually installed. That will ensure that these links aren't wiggling around and losing electrical connection. Thicker paper clips are actually better, or some kind of thicker wire. If they're too narrow, they're just going to flop back and forth. You don't want that. They have to be connected all the time. Again, soldering is best. Most people are scared of soldering.